vannak narcisztikus férfiak, van egy ilyen ügyfelem is, aki női gumiruhát hord időnként. Ez egy úgynevezett dolfét is. Egyszerre tárgy is, és egyszerre egy látens homoszexualitást is megélhet általa, sőt, még a szűk gumiruhát is felveszi magára alapnak, mintha egy teljesen új személyiséget hozna létre. Még a neve is más ilyenkor, mert magát például Zsanetnek hívja. Ilyenkor a hatalmas férfi teste messziről egy törékeny nővé válik, de csak messziről. Kicsit vicces is, és ne haragudj érte, és elnézést kérek attól, akinek ez a fétise, de amikor láttam két ilyen női ruhába öltözött gumidolt mű mellekkel, 45-ös magas sarkú cipőben, parókával, művaginával és kurva ruhában enyelegni, az volt az érzésem, mintha két szumó birkózó vagy két srek beöltözne női ruhába és úgy csókolózna. Elég nehéz volt megállni, hogy ne nevessek. Ők ilyenkor azt a vágyukat fejezik ki, hogy a szülők esetleg kislánynak várták őket? A feltételhez kötött szülői szeretettel dacolnak egy életen át, hiszen másik napokon ugyanez az ügyfelem, pet play, azaz állatjáték fétissel rendelkezik, és ilyenkor lónak vagy kutyának öltözik be, úgy, hogy még ló patákat is vesz, és felrak magának iszonyi súlyos pénzekért. Nagyon sok pénz költ erre. Természetesen ezeknek a narcisztikusoknak nincsen igazi partnere, sem családja, mert ez a fétise annyira elszigeteli őt, hogy nem tud kapcsolatot létesíteni. Itt csak a látens homoszexualitás vágyát éli meg a narcisztikus, amit nem tud elfogadni? Uh, the fetish of uh, uh, rubber, rubber dolls and more generally cross-dressing, feminization and so on and so forth has to do with extreme confusion of gender identity and with externalization of the death instinct, of the feeling that you're dead, that you're anyhow dead. The doll is a dead, inanimate object, but also representation of the female form. So it's a mixture of both. Now, Studies have shown that people who cross-dress, for example, which is much more common, um, feminize in other ways, doesn't, don't have to cross-dress and so on, are actually, they, they are not latent homosexuals. There's no, no, no trace of homosexuality. And they're not, obviously they don't have gender dysphoria. They are not, they are not uh, transgender. They are, not, they are happy with their gender. They don't want to become uh, females, yes? And so it has something, it has to do with other things. Probably expression of the feminine side, that is very suppressed, then expression of the fact that they feel dead inside. So if they become dolls, this is the expression of this death. Uh, it is uh, an attempt to uh, experience another gender, a gender that is perceived as having privileges and ironically having some kind of power uh, gets everything for free gets everything easy you know and because the man has to take care of the of the woman in old fashioned thinking the man has to take care so the woman is taking care of it's uh, an example actually or not of feminization but of infantilization So not only do I become a doll, which is an inanimate dead object, which reflects my inside. So I'm externalizing my inside. I'm what, is, what, when we externalize what's inside us, that is intimacy. What is intimacy? Intimacy is when I give you access to my inside. By becoming a doll, I'm giving you access to my inside. I'm telling you, listen, I'm dead inside. I'm like a doll. Come, come inside. See how I am. So it's, I'm creating intimacy with you. But on the other hand, my choice of doll is such that I get to experience being the gender that is taken care of. The gender that doesn't have to work hard. The gender that gets everything free. The gender that is protected. The gender that is provided for. You know, the gender that gets to sit at home and do shopping while I work hard. And so, In other words, in the case of narcissists, it's an expression of entitlement. The narcissist feels entitled to special treatment, incommensurate, not reflecting his work, his effort, his achievement. He expects to get all the rewards, all the prizes, all the income, all the fame, all the celebrity, but without working, without working hard, without investing effort, without anything. And this is what women do. 
in Narcissus' mind. In Narcissus' mind, the women just have to be born. From the moment they're born, a man takes care of them, gives them food, gives them home, gives them money, gives them... This is the perfect entitlement. Narcissus wants to be perfectly entitled. And one way of doing this is being a woman for a while. Um, so it's creating intimacy and, and satisfying entitlement at the same time. These are two powerful, powerful motivations. At the same time, the narcissist doesn't risk becoming that doll and, or becoming a woman. So by choosing a doll, he's saying to you, that's the dead part of me. That's a part that can never come to life. That's a part that will never become. It's a part that is, but will never become. It's not a process, it's a, it's not a snapshot. Yeah? So it's a safe way of experiencing these things. But this boy, for example, sleep in this woman's mask at night to feel... Yes, it's a way to experience gender, gender transition without any risk, in a totally safe way, and so on and so forth. And when he is inside the doll, when he is the doll, uh, he is really a woman in the sense that he, he feels that he's about to receive protection, uh, provision. He feels much more safe, much more taken care of than when he is a man. It's a man who, who feels uh, insecure, feels unsafe, feels in danger, a bit paranoid, a bit... Uh, so, for him, life is a constant struggle, constant war, constant threats, constant enemies, constant... And to rest from this, when he becomes a woman, he knows that there will be a man uh, who will... T so usually, this doll play is never alone. It's, uh, it's with someone or with others. To create the ambience where, you know, there will be a possibility of being, being take care, taken care of. So it's more of a social fetish than, uh, than, although this is technically not a fetish, but never mind. It's like a social fetish, not an individual. Some fetishes are totally individual. Um, and even the, the fetishist insists on being totally alone, and if he's not alone, he stops the, the activity of the fetish. And some fetishes are social fetishes. They must involve others because they are actually a theater production. The whole fetish is a theater production, so many people must be involved. And there is a kind of director and producer and someone who brings the sandwiches and everyone is happy and so on. This is, of course, also very important because narcissists regard themselves as actors and regard their lives as a kind of movie. Uh, movies. It's a movie. Life is a movie and he's the actor. And uh, he is at the same time participant and observer. So he sits, he, sits, he looks at the movie and says, oh, wow. That part was interesting in my life, you know. I acted well here. Here I acted well. Here I deserve an Oscar, you know. So he's a critic, he's an observer, and he's an actor in the movie, directing the movie, and so on and so forth. So this is a kind of continuation of this approach to life. Life as a movie, life as a production. You know? Many things are involved. 